I was happy to see this month's Fast Company featuring the CEOs with their, alongside their chief design officers looking at Morrow. <laughs> um, it was really terrific. It, it's a milestone moment where design is in that primary um, level of importance, but I'd love to hear more about where it is lost in translation, translation and where are those challenges and why. Is it still a misunderstanding about design? What is it that's keeping design from being truly up there? Sometimes it works, but other times it doesn't. You've got to have, you brought this up, why designers, you've got to have a leader who's going to put their neck on the line for mm -hmm. design. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a leader that's going to put your neck, I mean, that's <coughs> what I learned in the consultancy business. If you don't have a leader that's going to put their neck on the line for design, Get out of there. It's, it's like having a pet. Like, design right. is in. I'm going to have, I'm going to bring design in house, but it's my pet, right. you know, and I'm going to feed it and care for it, but you know, I'm still going to run my business in the right. Six Sigma way because, because right. that's why, because I got a spreadsheet that I've got to keep and I've got shareholder exactly. value and market. that's all I care about. And so there's, that to me is where the rubber hits the road. Mm -hmm. That is where the differentiator, do you have a leader that's mm -hmm. running your business that says, you know what, I believe you tomorrow, I'm going to go with your gut. Even though all of the research is showing me it's different, I'm going to go with your gut because I believe you. That's the difference. And that's why we only have a few up at the top that we could sit here and say right. they are design leaders right. in a big this industrial a, place. When you put a design person in a high enough position, they end up kind of having their tentacles out there. And the higher level position a designer can have, whether he's designing or not, or doesn't, is a designer, right? that infuses design to all the other areas. And our company, which is much smaller than you guys, like we're like a fingertip, uh, you know, my job is to work with design all the time. And so from the very top position, design is infused throughout the different jobs. Listen, I go to accounting, I review the, the financials. I hope it looks nice, but you know, it's, it's not really design. But you have your tentacles everywhere. And I think if you don't have design at the top levels of management, you're always gonna hit a wall because you're always gonna be a second tier yeah. uh, concept. You need the support, ideally of the CEO. Without that, you go nowhere. Mm -hmm. Now, the other problem is, are we ready? as a design community to have a seat at the table. Because what, I, what I've been witnessing is that there are tons of design leaders that are not ready. They are not good. I saw people, both in the consultancy world, very high level, working with us you know, in many companies, and then people in our, in our teams, in, they're not ready. They're not ready. And so, actually, they do so many damages. Because then, you know, you get that seat at the table and then you are not ready to, to play a role there and then you screw up the reputation of design. Right. And this is a big risk, yeah. especially for corporation. When a CEO wanna build design inside the company, design is design for them. In reality, you have graphic design and product design, and design thinkers, strategic design. You have so many areas of design and the reality is that the real design thinkers able to play their role is probably 5% of our community. Right. And there is no training for it right. unless, you know, if you, with the exclusion of the D school, uh, university in Milan that does design thinking and design management, there is something in Toronto, but there are really few institutions that prepare people to have that kind of role. Mm -hmm. and, and so this is, I think, we need to be really, really honest as a design community. Are we trained for that? Are we ready for that? Are we able to intertrain this kind of conversation? Are we able to, to get all the pressure that you have when you arrive up there? Because I saw so many leaders, design leaders, they, they cannot stand the pressure that our marketing leaders or other function have. We go into a lot of organizations. We've got COOs, we've got guys like you who are strong advocates for design, and yet the organizations that are buying our services and mm -hmm. are taking products to market, they're looking for us, the outsider, to tell them why it's valuable. And you know what the, the sad truth is? Most cases, we don't have the stories because when we work with clients, they're not going to share them with us. You guys have the stories. You guys are the ones that can start to show in very diffuse and broad ways and in very specific ways on specific product choices and business choices where and how design has helped to create value. And we're not doing a good job of it. I know it because every day it's on my shoulders when I go into these organizations. It's not, the CEO may say, great, we're a design innovation focused company, now that's our strategy. We've got innovation design people, we're good, I'm gonna go get lunch. And a bunch of other people aren't changing their behavior yet. And that's where cultural things can have a difference because one of the things we're working with a lot of our, 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 our private sector clients on are working outside their core business in less competitive spaces, doing 
partnerships in education and other areas because you can exercise the same muscles. You can bring people into a space where there's a lot of enthusiasm for common goals and they can learn about a design process without necessarily having to tear up their spreadsheet yet, without having to rip up their product requirements, without having to disrupt their engineering process. And we're doing with GE, working in East Africa, we're doing it a lot of, a lot of places and I think a, we have to have to find those missions that allow us to take people, particularly middle management, offline and into spaces where they can collaborate safely. And B, we need your help in at this moment when design may have a seat at the table. How is it? How is it making a difference? And how is that meaningful? Mm -hmm. You know, we know that Nike and Apple are sort of self-evident for that, but that's not going to, you can't walk into GE with a story about Nike and win business. I think one of the main problems these days is also that design as a word is sort of, I call it like a chewing gum. You can stretch it in all directions, but it's not really defined. So, I mean, do I call a designer a creator, an innovator, a catalyst? So there are so many definitions and words. I think most important is also that a company identifies themselves. I mean, we, for example, have values like ethics, aesthetics, ecology, economy, and that's what we talk about. We talk about the philosophy, and that's in our DNA. Design is just, in, from my point of view, is almost blurred these days and really hard to, to point down. And that's where misunderstandings happen. So it's, it's more of finding a direction um, not just the word for it, that, you know, whether you employ a designer, you, you want to create something. What do you create? Do you create a marketing strategy? Do you create a product? That's all covered under design and many more aspects. I think that's one of the problematics we have. I think actually real innovation actually not only comes on finding the new, but looking at what people are doing now and just trying to figure out how to do it better, right? Because the phone's been around for a long time. Communication's been around for a long time. But how can you improve upon that uh, remarkably is something that I like to think about, and I'm a designer by trade, and I'm running a company uh, within Samsung, and I think it's the stakes in emerging technologies right now for what design is are very, very high, right? And I think it all goes back to the speed at which things are changing, right? Typical business, and I would say a lot of marketing folks, they can't keep up with what's happening right now, so they eventually have to look to someone like me or you, or can you make this, and can you make it really quickly, you know? I think, what was it, the iPad was even around three years ago. Right, and so now it looks like it's distant. You know, we, everyone has one in their home, and they're comfortable with it. And so, at the pace of which things are so accelerated, moving so quickly, I use design. So it sounds like some of you guys embrace it, or some are sort of maybe backing off of it a little bit. But I use it in every term and in any way possible when I talk to the developers on my team. Um, the way that I go into a meeting and I'm going to try and raise money, or the way that I'm talking to an executive, I think of it in a design problem. Um, and it's refreshing, and I think it's our time. You know, the time has come for designers to really sort of step into it and see if we can kind of steer the ship. 